Tonight on That's What I'm Talking About, the legendary Harry Belafonte. Is this the end? Well, this was how I saw it. <laughs> Award-winning actress, Diane Carroll. I'll write that down and sign it. <laughs> Contributing editor for Rolling Stone magazine and BET correspondent, Torre. You know what real courage would have been if the Broccoli family had allowed the new Bond to be black? And the always outspoken comedian, Paul Mooney. I've got a great idea for a daytime TV show. Which is? Good Morning, Black America. And it will come on at noon. Okay. <laughs> we'll be talking films, television, and news. The greats, dates, and debates of black media. I'm Wayne Brady here, and welcome to That's What I'm Talking About. <laughs> Places, please. Take one. Cut. Ah, ah. This is the stuff that changes people. That's what I'm talking about. Hello, Wayne Brady here, and welcome to That's What I'm Talking About. Thank you, folks, so much for being here. Um, the first thing that I'm going to throw out on the table is uh, black or African American. Which one do you prefer, or should we even prefer? If we're going to deal in truths. What I put down for race is stolen African. Mm. Do you? Mm -hmm. But don't forget nigger, the new nigger, mm -hmm. that yeah. word that my oh, that generation yeah. embraces yeah. Well, and yeah. loves. Yeah, but then there's people who hate it because of what they experience with it, and it conjures up demons. So. Yeah. Well, when we grew up, they used to, you say, know, Harry and I have been around for a long time, yeah, yeah. and they used to say, as you were applying speak for, for you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, see, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> they said color? It asks for your color. <clears throat> on your application for your driver's license something. Good so I always wrote plaid. But I do believe that we <laughs> must never get so involved in, in this conversation that we could just understand that that's a sort of camouflage. It's sort of mm -hmm. to, to distract us from things that are important, like money. Mm -hmm. So why are we Power. sitting here talking about, you know, don't, you know, call me green. It's my favorite. No other group mm -hmm. has been in a search for title. Nobody else. That's nobody why it's idiotic. Else, nobody else somewhere along the line was yeah, called it's color, idiotic for Negro, it. Black, African American, and then something else. And we call ourselves African Americans, and yet the truth of the matter is that most black people in America know very little about Africa. How did we get to Africa with a C? Because it was originally with a K. Yeah, I mean, but it's all, so it's all, uh, well, I'm confused. Where's the doctor? <laughs> we, uh, now I just wanted to throw out the African American and black thing just to see where we, we were coming from on that. So now we're going to move into TV. We're starting with the media. This is a list of, um, of our most influential black TV shows. Now I just put this list together. It's my top 10 list plus two, so it's 12. Um, at number 12, I have the Richard Price show. Ah! Whoa, ah, whoa, 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 You already made a mistake. How could that be so low? How could you already bad? Wait a second. How can you even uh, remember uh, me? 12? This oh, is not number. This got to no, be in the top three at no, least. I understand. No, I understand. Can, can, can I just young. finish? You're too young. I've you seen every that. episode. Would you me let this too. man speak yeah. on, can, can I just finish? 12 was good. <laughs> this is great. You're about to give me a black eye. 12 was good. Put the pressure. I leave. Why can't it be a black eye? Oh, you smack. Don't make a fuss till you hear what number 11 is. Thank you. All right, all right. Yeah, that's my number 12. That's my number 12. <laughs> at, at number 11, the, the Flip Wilson show. Yeah, love Flip Wilson. I work with that. 10, You're talking Roots. Turkey. Roots. I love Roots. The Jeffersons. Good Times. Julia. Oh, yeah. The cup. And that wasn't yeah. done just because she's right here and she's gorgeous. Yeah, that was good. It's true. The check right. is in the mail. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> the Cosby Show. Rock. Uh, yeah. ROC. Okay. Uh, the Arsenio Hall Show, I Spy, In Living Color. Yeah, I was on. Yep, that's me. And The Chappelle oh, Show. Oh, that's me. Okay, yeah, I, okay. I stand by so, my, that's my take list. before. How is Richard Pryor 12th out now, of that list? Now, got to be in the top three. First of all, culturally, I would place The Richard Pryor Show and The Chappelle Show as bookends. Pryor Show made NBC so nervous. Rarely has a network been so wigged out. The network wasn't really frightened. They loved it because they had a life. 
those execs, they were like zombies. When Richard came on, now they had a life. They can make decisions. They can get on the phone. They can order you around. We can't do that. The censorship. They, had, they suddenly become alive. Before right. Richard, they were zombies. They were the walking dead. It was like when I was back in the day when I was a kid and there were no blacks in commercials. And we used to sit around and we, are they run by real fast and go, that was somebody black. You, you guys don't understand that we used to wait. Like this man here, we worship this man mm -hmm. because we were males and we wanted to. See, when I went to the movies, I wanted to see me. But we every did, black we had, yeah. woman, we worship yeah. this well, man. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But my mother. We had never seen anything yeah. like him before. No. Didn't tell me. <laughs> yeah, now they tell you. Where were you back then? Yeah, where were you back then? But anyway, no way. This was an image for us. You have to remember that we did. We went to the movies. We saw John Wayne. We saw all these white men. Yes. But to really to get involved, I have, I have to feel like I'm actually in the movie. When well, I see I'm, him I'm, in the I'm movies, very, yeah. I'm very happy that you said that because, I, well, I've thought about this uh, for years. I guess we've all thought of it because I thought for a long period of time that I was obligated, obligated to see any piece of property that involved black people. Mm. And the time yes. came in my life when I said, wait a minute, should I still hold on to this sense of responsibility that I'm there and shelling out because it's a black project. And I think it was a, an enormous dilemma for me, but I, I would say in the long run, I, I really started looking for quality. So you felt the need to always commit yourself, whether it was as a viewer or as an actress, that I've got to get behind these black things because it's black and I've got to be there for but black. But still, being black carries a responsibility. I don't care how, what you tell yourself, what denial, whatever you do. We were watching Dynasty. Mm -hmm. And people liked it. It was very popular. So popular during the day. I mean, uh, during the night. night yeah. When you came on, it changed it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Now, suddenly, there was somebody that was beautiful. Yes. There was someone who was wealthy. There was someone that would kick your behind. Right. You know, they, well, let me yeah. explain something to yeah. you. When we were putting that together, uh, they were kind enough um, to come to me to ask how should we put this character together? And I said, I would, I would like to be a part of who this character is because I know the whole thing is fluff mm -hmm. and we're all there to have a good time and we're pretty close. <laughs> but I would really like very much for you to write Dominique Devereaux exactly the same as you would write for a white male. I want her to be totally ruthless, absolutely no humanity. I didn't thank you for your presence. And I want her to have no feelings about being a mother. If you do that, White then you... White males are like that. Well, I... That's what <laughs> but, the, but the beauty... Especially the feeling about being a mother part. That's what told me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty was also that she was wealthy. And with the Cosby show, again, that they were wealthy. And so there was this aspirational aspect But they aspect were all about one thing, loved. and that was the... the, the the, mo the, the money. business, the money. It was all about and the money. And they were treacherous, yeah. too. Yes, yeah. They, were. Yeah, they were. And yeah. I, d I didn't want them to feel, because they were bringing a black person into the show, that I all of a sudden had to be this wonderful human being. Yeah. When you came into Dynasty, you crushed walls simply by being there. Why, if you get to a certain place as a black actor or as a uh, sports figure, why all of a sudden can you just not say, I've reached the mountain, but you then need to pick up the entire neighborhood and say, come on, I'm ta taking you with me. Well, why do you have to do that? Do you feel but the response? The, the, the lineage is so clear. I would not have made it on CNN if you had not broken down the barriers decades before. Absolutely. And, and I can see you. I grew up watching you. I know. And even more than that, what Jackie Robinson did before that. And even before that, what Harriet Tubman did. Mm -hmm. There's a very clear lineage that we talked about in my home with my parents. So I know that there are all these people who push the rock up the hill, right. and now I get to be at the top of the hill because right. they did a lot of that legwork before me. When you just said, why must we, once we have established ourselves uh, uh, as being present, why do we have the responsibility to have to bring everything else with us? I think you have that responsibility in part mm -hmm. because that's how you got where you are. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought something yes. into the room yes. when they got where they were. And there are expectations mm -hmm. with but that access to power, access to debate, access to bringing something to the table that didn't exist before you. I grew up my whole early life looking at people who played a plantation blacks, who played uh, house uh, slaves, who played buffoons, who had to poke out their lips and bug their eyes. What I never saw was A. LeVar Burton mm -hmm. and that 
physiognomy. Yeah. Uh, saying something about struggle, saying something about aspiration, saying something about who they were and Being they moved from the background into the forefront. That's and with what content, I think shocked you. You were not prepared well, for also, this man to be in the, the forefront. Also, also the phone calls from white friends every day when it was on. Well, you mustn't have white friends. I've told you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that we moved into that area. But is that your professional <laughs> is that funny? to us? <laughs> Folks, stick around. We'll be right back after this. Coming up next. Now watching MTV is like watching BET. I don't know if you folks know this, but a large percentage of the daytime television audience is black. I've got a great idea for a daytime TV show. Which is? Good Morning, Black America. And it will come on at noon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time to get up. <laughs> I don't get up at noon. <laughs> Daytime TV, it's all about Oprah. Oprah. She's the number one queen of all time. Oprah is a kingdom unto herself, which I want to throw it out for debate. That is a good thing, and that is a bad thing. Well, but we've seen Oprah through, th say, three generations of daytime TV. Mm -hmm. And it went from, it was semi-dignified when she started, then it became completely a circus, the Springer right. era, from Donahue to Springer. And now it's back, Springer is old now, now it's back to more confessional, more, a little more dignified. Oprah has remained a dignified television presence. Yes, she has. For all this time, that's amazing. <laughs> I love Oprah, I love her because she tricked white people. That's why I love her. How she tricked white people. <laughs> because she came out as Aunt Jemima with a degree. And she cried and she hunted child and she lord him mercy. They gave her a billion dollars and she turned into Dorothy Daniels right before their eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she's thin. They thought they had a colored Paul, girl. Oh, write that down and sign it. <laughs> they, they, Dorothy Daniels They thought they, right thought they had a colored girl. And she said, no. I'm a cover girl. I'll be on the cover of oh, magazine. No, she's fine now. <laughs> yeah, I love you saw her. I love her. I just, that's why I love her. I oh, love yeah. Oprah. I'm sorry. But I think the whole point of the thing is, in daytime, with such a large percentage, there's so much revenue generated because of that. You would think that we would have more of a presence in in the, the daytime. daytime. Let, let me just say one thing about that that observation. Why isn't there more being pitched to that demographic? Mm -hmm. And I think that somewhere. Those who sit down and study market moves, study where people are, study who spends, study the... There is a... Don't say spends and look in my direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry. I, I always speak to my right. <laughs> but the point is that if those same forces felt that somewhere in midday television there was something to be extracted that spelled profit for them, black would not interfere with the choice. Well, we're certainly made. seeing that with the reality show era. I mean, you know, being Bobby Brown, Runs House, there's tons of, and whatever you think of them, there's right. tons of black reality shows but now. But on niche markets, though, I mean, I mean, yeah. MTV is huge, yeah. but it's MTV. Well, let's talk about MTV. They didn't want blacks. On, they, they, the first four years. Yeah, they, they didn't want blacks, and they didn't even want Michael Jackson. He's whiter than all of them. Michael put had to fight to Michael get his video. I'm saying run. that they didn't want him. I'm saying he's whiter than all of them. Yeah. They didn't even want him on, okay? Yeah. And it's interesting to watch because now watching MTV is like watching BET, That's mm -hmm. right. which is almost black television. And so. <laughs> a BET. Yeah. Well, it's a new day. <laughs> well, it's a new day at BET right yeah, now. Sure. Come on now. Yeah, don't be naive. Anyway, uh, <laughs> wow. I, I just want. I want us, as a black people, if, for me, to represent us on all phases, on the news, on everything, you know? Right. We do things we die in, we sit in till we're not in. And then everyone else, women get their part, I'm talking about white women, they get their part because of us, how we suffer. They, a, a white woman should kiss a black man every time she sees him, because without us, they'd have nothing. Well, it's also about how, how gay people have used the template of the black civil rights struggle of course. to work their well, every, struggle, and everyone has the black done power that. struggle. But everyone has done that. Why is that still so? Huh? Why is that I think it's because of the so? black male. It's, it's, it's something about us. That's why we can't catch a cab. It's something about <laughs> us. 
are you saying it, that the fear yes. that James yes. Baldwin yes. said is, it's a sexual, is always yeah. the, it is a, the fear. It's the fear, still there. Yeah. But also the fascination with black fear and men. Fascination. There's that's both exactly those things yes, it and is. often at the same time. Yes, I, I know that's true and I know Harry knows that's true too. It's a, He's frightened them to death and yet they couldn't take their eyes off. They right. wanted, you know, his, his presence. Coming up next. What if you and Sydney and you had said, I have to coon it up too? such thing as a mason or an elk we were black yeah. before there was any such thing as a jew or a christian we were black people we were talking about you know uh, black and entertainment and whatnot what what about the trend of trying to make um make the black versions of something that exists mm. just so we have some some sort of ownership over it recently we had a remake the black honeymooners was that version that movie version any better no once it's done and it's white it's done and even as whiteness is redone like the postman rings twice once it's done it's done it's a done deal it's like the whiz i people got very upset over that you were, you were getting in waters, shark-invested waters. They worshipped that, that uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, Wiz. the Wizard of Oz. The, the Wiz they didn't like. Yeah. Really? They didn't yeah. like, but you, they were, you were, you're classic. stepping on uh, holy ground. Yeah. You were messing with Julie Garland. We did it, it better, though. Done. We did it better. Just the same I, well, way they, John Coltrane made but my the, favorite thing better. But in the movies, it didn't do anything. No, but no, I still watch it tonight. But I have to ask, did you enjoy it? The parts of it, a lot of parts of it. I was too hooked up on Julie Garland. Oh, no. I'd been brainwashed already. Oh, I love that movie, though. I've been brainwashed. Come on. I love the movie. I kept looking for Julie the soundtrack. Garland. If you have a work that is so distinctive right. and has such a powerful DNA, to attempt to remake it, whether you make it with white people or black people, if you do not live up to some standard of right. why you say it is that you want to remake that, you're doomed to some tragic conclusion. That's exactly I didn't it. like The Wiz. Mm -hmm. And you it wasn't like because black people were doing it. That's exactly it. I didn't it. like The Wiz because it was a badly made movie off of a classic. Why remake it unless you got something better? That is I love hearing that. I, I, no. I guess I'm the only one, and I, you know, well, used you to being a minority, so that's yeah. what, I you loved, loved The okay, Wiz. Well, I loved the music. How yeah, old are you? Was, uh, it was 34. Yeah, I loved music. Michael Jackson. It was music. I understand. Loved the rhythm of it. The, I mean, they really did find a black way of really tra attacking some of those things that they did in The Wizard of Oz. I still so love really the music. I'm attacking with you. Were you making comparisons yeah. when you saw The Wiz to The Wizard of Oz? Sure. You saw the whiz because you what see. you've seen in the Wizard of Oz. But it's not so sure. much a comparison, but in your mind, you are following the parallel. It's not a comparison. Uh, come on, they, yeah. the white people show the Wizard of Oz every year. It was September 7th every single year. You must watch the Wizard of Oz. At least when I was growing up, every year they played it. And then when I finally saw the whiz, oh my God, this is so much fun. What, what is it? They're remaking King Kong again. Mm. What, fourth, fifth time? Which doesn't okay, make wait, it a good movie. Look. Yeah. No, I'm saying they remake it. They're obsessed with remaking King Kong. So why chasing do you that think white that lady. is so? Because it's chasing that white lady. That's of why. Of course it but, is. But the, and you don't have to say it that quickly. <laughs> but it I want has them to I want them to do with our American But I want them to redo it now. Because sexuality. Because white people are real black now. I want... The, the, white people I want, are I want, real black. I want, yeah, I want a, oh, don't go I want so a fast. ghetto really Fay Ray. I want her to chase the gorilla back to the, oh, the yeah. island. You know what I really want? You know what I really want? Get your hands off me. You know what real courage would have been? If the broccoli family had allowed the new Bond to be black, what? now that would have oh, been no, fun no. You and want exciting. White people now to, I will go you want to a black see. James Bond. White yes. people will cut their wrists all over America. You don't want to <laughs> you commit suicide. <laughs> You know, no, what, 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 what we're going to call it? Black Bond Bond? Like, <laughs> yeah, please, come on. <laughs> now, it's going to be pretty hard for, for movie actors like this. Take a look. Hattie McDaniel. Oh. Butterfly McQueen. Ah. Mm. Stephen Fetchett. Bill Bojangles Robinson. Billy Buckwheat Thomas. Mm. Eddie Rochester Anderson. Now, those are guys who, as soon as I say their names and we're looking at the pictures, it, it brings a certain connotation because we know that they had to operate within a certain time period. Now, there, there are folks that I've heard say, well, you know, that dude was a sellout, and they were the sellouts of their day. But they, let's just establish but, one thing. But they thing. were actors. They, they were, were brilliant. actors. They, they were, were brilliant. absolutely brilliant. They were brilliant. brilliant. I'm going to tell you they why. They were. Because they had to act for real. They deserved Academy Awards. 
Intelligent men, very they had, intelligent they women. Academy because they put on this buffoonity, they put on this act, they knew what those white people wanted. At that time, it was overt. Now, now it's covert. You know, mm -hmm. you're, but, you're, but a, you're it, a nigger when you, you leave the room. But, they, but then you were that right to your face because it was a control factor. Well, they but, took the period of yeah, time but like, and they, they took controlled what, They took lemon and they made lemonades. Yes. They True, did what they, they had to do to work. But they at, forwarded yeah. the stereotypes. But it's not, but it was um, at that I time. I think he's saying uh, that they yeah, did just, not no, have a choice. I said, I, they had but to no, feed wait, their families. Uh, even when they were porters, they could speak five different languages. That, but wasn't and they, Oscar and, and, Micheaux and, working at that same time? Would you like to listen to the radio? I'd rather listen to you, Nina. Making films where there were some dignified roles. I, I've seen some of them, and he does have some Toms, but for the purpose of saying, this person's a Tom. But he, he, he did not make dignified he did not scene. Andy on the radio was white, just like Eminem. It's not, nothing's changed. Then when it came on telev television, these were black performers. And they had gotten names, Danny, from going to the Apollo and watching black people to steal, to take. And black people... I. I'd rather see black people acting black and buffoonery and doing things that black people do than see white people doing it. It's, it's, it's like with the rap and all that. I don't like it. I'm offended by it. I don't like it. I, 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 it makes me want to start hanging black people again. Then I'll find out who's white. <laughs> but we have to admit that many of those performances that we saw are, we, we will never, we'll never forget them. Huh, what, they those were, performances oh, the eyes? Oh, my heavens. Oh, no. I were, practice with the eyes sometimes myself. Unbelievable. And, no, they were unbelievable. And for them to work a full day of whatever, indignity and on I think the without set them, and with people I, who I put, think without them opening those, those, those doors for them to accept blacks in a way that we wanted to be accepted, I don't think this man would have got accepted at, at the, when he came in. If we weren't there to do that, somebody if, has to open that door, whether we open it with Yaza or well, what if yes, you open the door. and Sydney and you had said, I have to coon it up too. I coon it up back in Where those times. Where would we be now? Yeah. I mean, that you guys stepped but up and said, I'm going to gonna be strong yeah, and dignified. Yeah. I think the, uh, the time in which we lived, there was a universal readiness for the kind of change, the kind of upheaval that came along with our era. We weren't just defined by those leading men and those really remarkable looking women that graced the screen. We were also connected to a lot of things that were going on socially in our day. Right. Africa was in great turmoil. Uh, nobody wanted to return back to the colonial formula after having fought in the Second World War, which many of us did because we were told that that war was for democracy, that war was to end white supremacy, it was to end all of those inequities. And at the end of that war, we came back with expectations. I came back with expectations. Sydney came back with expectations. James Earl Jones came. So when the doors that we knocked at gave the slightest indication that they were ready to open, we marched in and brought those expectations with us. As but a black entertainer, at some point, there's some level of minstrelsy, and it's either the tap dancing or the black monster figure. You have to do one of those two things. And somewhere it, in between. It, it, well, didn't Hannah McDaniel say she would rather play a maid than be one? Mm -hmm. Didn't True. she say that? Right. But, but where, well, where are the courageous people that said, I, I will not do right. those stereotypes? Yeah, right. I will not play those. Where are they? Let me ask you a question that sees comparatives. Would you say that that aspect of the hip-hop culture, which now puts black men out with chains around their neck, defiling black women mm -hmm. and going to a debased place for cultural expression, has any comparison with those who made the choice to play the buffoons of that era before? Do you find that there is Great another... Great question. Do you find that there is another... I knew I loved you more. No, 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 no. Great um, question. Yeah, absolutely. There is some in what I talked about, the minstrelsy and wanting to play that, that black buck, you know, figure, that nigger, ignorant. Like, we are reveling in that, absolutely. Well, don't you find uh, that as offensive? Well, no, because it stands, it stands in contrast <clears throat> to the weak Negro that we saw from the 50s that, that, you know, like the men that we just saw, it stands in stark contrast. We're not taking anything. Now, it's an ignorant figure at the same time, reveling in his, 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 his right? exploits in the street. So you say as no, not necessarily violent, right. We can suspend our morals. Uh, look, no, 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 But also, okay. but also, you, also, part of with the hip hop generation is, 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 has many problems with our, the men's relationship with women, right? But part, large part of that is because many of our fathers 
not mine, but many of our fathers, abandoned us. We grew up without a father in the home. How do we, we relate we to that, women? We actually, don't even no, know. But I actually think that the whole hip hop, all of this, is a backlash from the civil rights movement and from the movement. We never followed that through. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to be free, and this, this dream never came true. And I think the kids are defying, they're, they're angry about it. Mm -hmm. That we didn't make that. it the way it should be. There is that. We marched, no. we got yeah, hosed, we, we got bit by dogs, and where yeah. are we? I just think that they you know, I think those yeah. slick white people up in the boardroom iced us again. Yeah, I, they could, I can believe that too. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. put something on the table well, I, that was so seductive yeah. and so yeah. hard to resist. Yeah. Look, when I, when I hung out up in the South Bronx with Africa Bombarda and Melly Mel and watched the dawning, of the hip-hop culture, it brought to me a profound sense of uh, a wonderful thing that was in our future. This was an articulation that was just absolutely it's great. stunning. Yeah, and then it came All ugly. of a sudden, one day, somebody ugly. came up and jingled 30 bags of, uh, 30 pieces of, of silver. silver. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, many began to, t and that institution of rape and profiting. Yeah stepped in and yeah. corrupted and turned that thing into another being. Now, I must ask you, are you saying that the white music community understood that there the, was a place the people for, in power, for this music and they directed these young black people not the it, white music community, the white banking community. I don't, you know, I don't even know if it's if the, the white, power structure that directed it, much as the, the understructure, right? The teenagers who, who mostly buy the music said, hey, we like that black buck. We yeah, like the no, guy no, who's going to be shooting it, it everybody. No abstract. It's how you were marketed. It's how your brain was washed. Yeah. The market is dictated by those who want the market to go where they take it. And we follow. Mm -hmm. And it's always been that way. White people, black people, we go to war. We are in Iraq because it's marketed that way. And we are struggling with our souls to try to find an answer for something that is absolutely immoral. And we don't know how to grapple with it because we are part, we are bought into that. And I think that we have to face that fact and then deal with it from that perspective. Black I mean, people and white people don't go and just abstractly buy things that demonize them because they want it. They're propped up for it. They're prepared for it. They're instructed towards it. Mm -hmm. And everything locks in on it. And I think that that is America. All right. See, now we're getting into it. So stay with us. Don't go away. Coming up next. I watched Malcolm go from where Malcolm was to what Malcolm became. black people informed enough about what's going on in the world? I mean, I think in general as Americans, even after 9-11, our concern, our, our thoughtfulness about the rest of the world does not really exist. We think about what happens in America, mm -hmm. and then, you know, if, if, if the Negroes <laughs> riot in Paris for seven days, then we start to pay attention. But for the most part, we only pay attention to what happens. But that's not racial. That is, right. all of America is so just American centric. And I just think it's not enough action. Yes. I think that's the problem. I agree with that. I would accept that there's not enough yeah, action. Yeah, not enough action. As, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a positive and an important yes. uh, uh, critique. But I have to tell you, not enough action is not just at the doorstep of black America. Oh, I know that. Or brown America. Yeah, I, know. I think it's an American flaw. Now, they march on Washington. Now, the March on Washington was one of the most significant events in black, white, it was just an American thing. It was American history. Malcolm X called it the farce on Washington. And I'm going to direct it over here. I watched Malcolm go from where Malcolm was to what Malcolm became. And there was a decided shift from where he started in his passion to where he, at the time when his life was ended. The same exact thing with Dr. King. Mm -hmm. Dr. King's deep relationship to his ministry and the religion from which he, he, he emerged was decidedly more militant 
by the time he came to the time when he was taken away from us. Mm -hmm. The March on Washington was black driven uh, experience mm -hmm. that changed all of America to make America become closer to the dream that we say we want this nation yeah. to be. Um, another thing that we'd like to bring up right here, remember the silent protest yes. at the Olympics. Yes. Now, there are two important lessons here I was just thinking. One, you have to have the courage of your convictions. And yes. two, to have that, you have to be a winner. Because if they would have come in fourth, no one would have cared because they would have been doing that off but, the sidelines. But also, but also working the, the media, great. a powerful I that. visual no, it was I love statement. That. It was powerful. I, I love that. That's like Jesse running at, during the when Hitler was there. What's his name? When he, Owens. Jesse Owens. Yeah, running. I love all that. That's that's that black kind of drama. I love. I mean, drama is exactly yeah, working the media, that. making love, a powerful visual kind of statement. Black, drama. black oh. fist, not go out and do I an like interview. Right, just stand there. This picture, <laughs> yes, sir. This picture has just displayed a metaphor that you have alluded to by saying they could never have had any significant impact if they had not been at the top. Exactly. That is precisely mean, why yeah. just being an actor is not enough. Mm, see. If you're at the top of the game, you have, to you have the capacity like to make to an impact. That. And the question is, have you... <laughs> <laughs> That's her version of the Black and then, Fist. And you had the nerve, <laughs> no, you had the nerve to get up and dance. I'm sorry. That well, get you <laughs> shit <laughs> <on the scenes>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you're right. but I think that when black people achieve as any person from minority, when a Jew achieves, there is an expectation from the tribe that somehow you got where you are because somebody paid the price to get you there. Mm -hmm. And that when you do get where you have access and a voice and the capacity to influence, that you would somewhere in that power use aspects of it or portions of it to, to reach back into the plantation and reach back into the suffering of our group and lift it up. I completely agree with you. It's what you do with power. It's what you do with power. And exactly. how do you apply it? Would it make any difference to you if at some point you saw Denzel Washington striking that pose? What would it mean if he did? It, it would be it would be polarizing. It'd be great. But wait, but all this is, I mean, this is a black power salute, right? Absolutely. And when Denzel and, and, won and the, the right Oscar, place too. when great. he won the Oscar and gestured to Sydney, and that to me was the same thing in Hollywood as this, that continuity, black power, we are together, I see you, you're part of my struggle, I'll carry it forward, somebody is coming next. It was absolutely beautiful. It was a lovely moment in our history. Absolutely. I was happy that the motion picture industry had produced that moment finally for yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to flash, flash some more pictures, and then I just want to get your take on it. The Million Man March. One of the things about the Million Man March is, depending on how you felt about it, if, if this Million Man March was happening, some other black men might look at you like you were crazy if you weren't there. No, so only a million people could go. <laughs> and that I was mean, it. it, yeah. it I didn't make it. it I was there. Man, 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 and one. One. Yeah, and two. So you couldn't <laughs> no, go. No, but I was there. I had an amazing day. I'll never forget. I went last so year. Happy I, would, I couldn't go this year. That I went. It made me feel great. But as time goes on, I'm mm -hmm. like, it had why? little to no impact. Why did we do it? Well, you don't think it well, was something why. that I'm was even a solidarity no, issue? You're nothing, asking yourself. But no, no change. Did you has, feel something that? as you thought of it. Right? In that last moment when we're all a million, million plus standing there, black men holding hands. I mean, it's great. You ever hold hands with two black men you don't know? I mean, like, no, that no, never happened. No, but it's great happened. to get a million black people in one place at one time. I like But that. nothing has happened. It didn't change anything. Nothing has come of it. Uh, you know, I mean, at least the March on Washington, they could look and say, look, that had a this huge a impact. Moment. But, it, you know, ultimately, it's just a day. It's just like, you know, we had a great party. You know, does a party ever change anything? No. The fact that we all got together at one place and did that, even the victory in that is that there were a million, which you are one of them, brothers walking around with a great memory of that so it is solidarity. To see each other. It's it's a good thing. I think it's wonderful yeah. to see each other. I think the Million Man March demonstrated, and it was not required to go beyond that, demonstrated that there was a large active constituency in this country that saw value in the kind of militancy that is very rarely expressed in their behalf. And I think that with Farrakhan and what was said, he didn't talk about burning down the America, he didn't talk about burning down the nation. Mm -hmm. He said, let us rise up and let us let them know that we exist 
and that we have a sense of responsibility for family. All the things that were not being said were reflected at that moment. It was not created in order to have an ongoing agenda. I think the second one, which just took place, was the million more peoples coming together, was the first time that this movement and this grouping started to put things on an agenda for activism and for future application. Do you agree then, you know, that when Kanye West um, made, a, made a statement that, that I know a lot of folks freaked oh, that, up. That George didn't Bush like black didn't people? care no, about black people. He was saying that Bush and the government didn't care about well, black people, they, and that's why no a, one was they took a survey during Katrina. They took a survey, and they said that 98% of white people in America say Bush does like black people. It's us that don't like them. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I went to, listen, I went to the airport, I went to the airport, and they said, <laughs> and they said we're on orange alert. They, they say that out loud. I go, good, I'm on white alert, and I'm not getting off it. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back. Since we go to break, please. <laughs> Coming up next. We are a product of the segregationist era, and you are not.